Hello. Is I'm able? Yes, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay. A very good evening to all of you. I'm Faria Khatun Nawi, Research Coordinator of Eco Foundation. This Eco Foundation is an environmental and conservation NGO from Cochin. Today, we are, we are having the three consecutive lectures. And the first lecture is on the topic of disaster diseases and geological history by Neetu J. Neetu J is doing her MSc from MJ University. Before welcoming her, I would like to request all the participants to please mute their mics to avoid any disturbances. And if they have any query, and so, any you? comment we will discuss in in the, in the last of the session now i am welcoming miss uh, miss neetu j to express her thoughts miss neetu hello yes can you miss, audible yeah yeah you are audible okay okay yeah yeah over i am can i present the screen now yeah yeah present your screen Okay. Is it visible? Uh, your screen is not visible, Neetu. Okay. Now is it visible? Uh, no, not yet. Wait, I will again. Uh, actually, here in the present now screen is not uh, correct correctly. I can I couldn't see this. Uh, there's a one option present your screen. Yeah. Please. Yes. But, uh, sorry, an error has occurred when screen sharing that I have seen a message. Uh, Jishnu, could you help her? Yes. Is it now visible? Yes, I will. Uh, Faria, I will help her. One, yeah, yeah. One help her in presenting her okay. screen. Uh, okay, sure. Hello, Nidu. Hi, Nidu. Am I Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and uh, I think uh, you are using the laptop. Yes, I'm using it. Yes. Yes, then, uh, is, there, is there an option for presenting your screen? Yes, I have two times present the screen, but you are not visible. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, actually, uh, once we done, but at that time it was clear. Sorry, I couldn't hear you now. Once more, can you? Uh, actually, uh, we done once uh, that previously, oh. but it's not visible. Uh, uh, can exit, uh, exit and come again. Yes, I'm giving present now. Okay. Is it now okay? No, it is not no, it's not here. visible. Oh, God. Then can you rejoin, Nitu? Can you rejoin? Can you rejoin? Yes. You rejoin? Yes. Okay, of course. Then try it. And while okay. rejoining, you just do uh, share your screen like that. Okay, okay. 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 Dear participants, sorry for the inconvenience.
ഹലോ കയറി കയറിയോ ജോയിൻ ചെയ് ജോയിൻ ചെയ് കുഴപ്പമില്ല ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തോ ചെയ്യും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ ഷെയർ ചെയ്തോളാം സ്ക്രീൻ ഞാൻ ഷെയർ ചെയ്തോളാം എൻ്റെ സ്ക്രീൻ ഞാൻ ഷെയർ ചെയ്തോളാം കേട്ടാ ഓക്കെ വെരി ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് ടു എവരിബഡി myself in pursuing post graduation on dream and we are my friends and disaster kottayam in kerala i am so glad to be here with you all uh, what i want to share with you is some background on the topic the biodiversity and emergence of infectious diseases and why it is important to know us so if you have any questions please stop sir any questions and we go along uh, before i start i would like to share a quote Never give up. Today is hard. Tomorrow is worse. But the day after tomorrow will be sunshine. So with this, let's get started. So, biodiversity means the variety of animals and plants found on this planet, including the geographic location they are found in. So we can, we can separate these words into two, bio and diversity. So, bio means life and diversity means the variety. So, the variety, everything is the part of the biodiversity. That it, it includes not only the species that we consider rare, threatened, etc. But also every living thing, from human beings to organisms we know, organisms, fungus and uh, invertebrates. So, this, everything it comes under biodiversity. The Convention on Biodiversity means biodiversity among living organisms. Can you imagine a world without trees, grass, flowers, or birds? This biodiversity has immense aesthetic value for us. And cultural or spiritual values of plants and animals. For example, Hindus identify oaths as the transport of Goddess Lakshmi. Likewise, every culture has its own way to uh, see or to uh, see the uh, biodiversity. And option value means... Uh, For example, I am telling this an example. Uh, there might be a plant or animal which we can use in the future uh, to, for your to cancer. So if we destroy the biodiversity, we are actually losing the chance of finding the plant or animal for curing the cancer. Thus, biodiversity has great potential of being useful to us in the future. So this, this potential, this untapped potential that is of value, this that is it's an opportunity for human beings in the future and scientific and educational value it has a great scientific value actually many species of plants and animals are the subject of our research economic value we depend heavily on biological products for our survival right uh, food supply medicines and raw material for industries for everything we depend directly to uh, um, indirectly to biodiversity that comes on and uh, these are major three types of genetic species and ecological diversity so from the name suggest genetic diversity is the variation among genetic resources uh, for example all humans are have the same species yet there are so many differences in this is due to the genetic diversity diversity among genetic resources next is species diversity that is diversity variety within a habitat of a species that uh, before we know about species diversity we should know about what species it is a group of invading plural area termed as species diversity that it, it includes in the first week uh, while considering there are there is a small grass to a very huge tree a very big tree and there is a small microorganism and there are many large animals so the variety of species is there as species diversity ecological uh, diversity is the different variety in ecosystem in a particular region 
so a coastal city is the geographical area where the living things like the plants animals and the non living things like the temperature soil they both are interrelated interlinked and both are interrelated so this is termed as ecosystem uh, for example forest is an ecosystem pond is an ecosystem uh, mangroves is an ecosystem desert likewise there are many you know variety in the ecosystem is termed as in case of india in the pandemic is the spreading of disease in a large area like a country a continent or all, all the whole world the best example is covid 19 as we are experiencing the truth and fact of covid 19 next is endemic endemic means the disease uh, is restricted to a particular space a particular location a region population and it means Within people that we can see here, uh, for example, malaria is endemic to tropical regions. So the disease is just only happening or seeing within certain people. So this is the uh, picture we wrote. Endemic is just uh, seeing a disease uh, within a particular population or a particular region. Epidemic is seeing a disease transmitting all over the world. And pandemics, we can see the whole world. Now let's analyze or some look some major just showing the live animal market of China. Uh, actually, the trans say that ha, it might have related to the recombination of coronavirus in a bat and fungi. That is, which is a bat coronavirus is jumped jumped from so the virus uh, combined with the pangolin. And it evolved into SARS coronavirus two that now causes COVID. This is the status showing. Uh, actually, the pangolin is here the intermediate host, and it causes. It is believed the, it is the uh, one of the best trafficked animals in the world. So it is believed that their scales and their blood have medicinal properties, and also their flesh is very delicious in some parts of Southeast Asia. So this is the picture of live market in China. There are some new facts of COVID-19. Uh, that is, uh, several dogs, cats, lions, tigers are also contact infected humans have tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, like New York Zoo, there are several lion tigers are uh, tested positive. As well as in Netherlands, two mink animal farms have also been detected with this. Uh, the minks that were infected by the humans and have transmitted the virus to other people also. So these are the multi-human transmission. That is from mink to human beings. And uh, uh, even though research on SARS coronavirus to an animal is limited, uh, recent re research shows that and cats, golden Syrian hamsters is this. So, uh, when experimentally uh, infecting the coronavirus into these three animals, uh, they are on species. They are spreading the disease in the same species. Dogs that can infect it, but they are not spreading the viruses to the uh, other dogs as easily compared to these cats. And uh, a number of studies have also investigated in uh, animals of the same human primates as the model for the coronavirus. If an infection, that is, these are the pictures uh, correspondingly shows Rhesus macus, Cynomolgus macus, Grivets, and common marmosets. So uh, these are experimentally infected and become things. And uh, and one thing is, spies, pigs, chickens, and pigs, they have the infection based on the research from this piece. Next is mice, Middle East respiratory from coronavirus disease. It was identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. So the source of viruses is the origin of viruses are not fully understood. But according to the analysis of different uh, different virus genomes, it is believed that it may have originated in bats and was transmitted to bats sometimes in the distant past. So it is first originated in bats and then uh, transmitted into these camels. These are dromedary camels. It, uh, this is also seen in Middle East 
and African and South Asian countries. And at, uh, since uh, in September 2012, the number of cases of uh, domestic diseases is 2,494. But uh, until May 2020, uh, the first May, it, it, it increased and uh, slight increases only we can see. 2,562 confused and from 8 to 8 to associated deaths. So I spread to over 27 countries in the world. Next is SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome. It is first identified in 2003. It is reported in 2005 in China. 26 countries are affected by this disease, and more than 8,000 cases are reported, 774 died. And the case of uh, transmitters, uh, first, the main way it seems to spread by close person to person, like 50 persons, but how uh, it affects uh, human beings. So it not be not an animal virus, as uh, an animal is a virus. Perhaps bats that's been spread to other animals, such as civet cats. These are the ages of civet cats. So it is thought to be bats have given uh, diseases to these civet cats. From this, we got the diseases. Next is plague. So uh, the disease causing agent here is bacteria, Yersinia pestis. We can call it as L pestis. Uh, uh, what happens here is if virus seed infects rats, a bacterium can pass to the fleas and that bring the uh, rat's blood. So when the plague is uh, plague stricken this rat is dies, uh, the fleas means um, sorry, uh, the vipers is abandoned now and it goes to white human beings. So uh, here the transmission through rats and this fleas. And uh, the disease in 2010 to 15, there were 3,200 more cases and for deaths. So, Congo, Madagascar, and Peru are pandemic countries uh, to play. Next is HIV and AIDS. So, uh, where did HIV come from? That is a subspecies of chimpanzees. Due to uh, South, uh, South Africa, West Africa, had been identified as the original source of the virus. That uh, HIV was introduced to human population when hunters became exposed to this infected blood. Uh, and, uh, the the uh, most advanced stage of HIV infection is AIDS. It required can many years to develop cases and, uh, and causes the formation of global warming. And a mouth through the uh, globic and extreme weather occurs. Extreme weather, it includes a flood, cyclones, etc. Floods create favorable environment for uh, numerous health consequences. That is, we can, you can see from here picture, there's a rat in flood. This is the picture of uh, 2018 Kerala flood. Uh, if flood water become contaminated with the human or animal waste, the rate of uh, disease transmission might occur, increase. As in case of other extreme weather event is cyclone, uh, in case of cyclone, uh, the, the disease and illness associated hygiene, sanitation, and uh, some people may lose their shelter and their belonging. So these all factors responsible for the uh, emergence and transmission of infectious diseases. So, and also I smelt well, will we'll release glacial microbes and viruses that have been trapped and preserved for tens to hundreds of thousands of years. So uh, there's a study had happened in 2014. Uh, there, uh, they found that 3,000 year old giant viruses from uh, Siberian permafrost. Giant viruses like uh, these get their names because they are so large. Relatively speaking, they can be easily viewed under a light microscope. While an average virus can be as small as 20 nanometers, a giant virus cannot fit through a hole of 200 nanometers or smaller. Mm. So 
so uh, we will look into the solution part of our uh, biodiversity and infectious diseases so our solutions are in nature uh, as you know united nations celebrate 22 may as international day of biological diversity for understanding and awareness of biodiversity issues so the theme of 2020 may 22 international day of biological diversity is our solutions are in nature the theme was that people also a part of nature rather than separate from uh, separate human beings from nature uh, if a ecosystem is healthy it can protect against the spread of diseases but if it is high the infection of our own solution to our own problems the uh, best way or the first way is managing pathogens by managing biodiversity if in case of uh here is an example of gentinobacterium liberum as a parasite and it is inserted into uh, into the endangered frog rana micosa it was affected by affected by clitoridomycosis it was a disease it is a disease and it kills large number of frogs when it when gentinobacterium liberum is inserted into rana micosa it is uh, it is actually it is the number it gets uh increase that is the clitoridomycosis effect is reduced they are cured from the disease likewise in case of coral uh, the application of phages phages means bacteriophages that is these are the viruses which kill bacteria so when we insert these phages into corals it also control this kind of bacterial infections in corals next is more species means less disease generally uh, broadly we can say that biodiversity itself seems to protect organisms including human beings from transmission of infectious diseases uh, preserving biodiversity is the best method perhaps generally may reduce the incidence of pathogens and for that there is we are celebrating uh, means un united nations celebrating the uh, 2021 to 30 as the decade on ecosystem restoration and this is that yet we are uh, confirmly we are not uh, uh, evolved or uh, discovered any best medicine for viruses only vaccines are improving that you know so we can find foresters forest is our antiviruses there are many antibiotics are also there but for virus viruses the medicine is less very less so we can say forest is the uh, uh, for curing virus viral infections and we can say that high biodiversity here uh, high biodiversity is the so when we cut down these forests and making it benefit for human beings the bats like or the rats like small animals or small organisms are not running they act as a weed lifestyle because that is it is so high they are uh, in this as to a uh, human population in so the risk is not going anywhere it, it comes near to us and causes diseases so the best method is keeping forests as as by animals and wildlife and here uh united nations have 17 sustainable development goals among which the third one is for uh, for good health and well being so we can look this third one it, it ensures healthy lives like lives and promote well being for all ages of human beings it targets for uh, sustainable development goal 3 health among the three 3.3 suggests that in by 2030 end of the epidemics of aids to infect us these we can control we can take uh, the aim of sustainable development goal three and this is a uh, age of urban conservation uh, and uh, it study says that by 2050 two of every three people on earth will live in a city so cities are one of the biggest source of pollution and we know the unplanned urban growth also threat, threat to our natural habitat so here you can see many plants are going growing on the uh, urban cities and urban terrace here how how we are uh, uh, we are protecting or conserving our nature and here 
this is a sad image of in this cartoon says a sad image of nature uh, earth as it looks is memory uh, old images so it, it is thing, thought that uh, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it it says by robert swan uh, no some the someone else will ourselves that should be ourselves humans are the only creature in the world who cut the trees make paper from it and then write save trees on it but it is not meant that uh, paper is not needed for us but everything has its own sustainable way of doing things and uh, conserving biodiversity is not only for uh, the healthy benefits but only for the physical health it also for the mental health so spend time in nature it also help reduce stress and anxiety it improves your mood and uh, boost feelings of happiness and well-being so it can turn us green time ecotherapy um, and forest bathing everything so uh, and our brain benefits from a change back to nature through conserving and protecting our own nature so as i'm concluding my topic uh, nature actually is in a crisis stage and it is threatened by biodiversity and habitat loss uh, global warming uh, pollution so there should be a strong and uh, sound uh, management of all programs like hazardous medical and chemical waste management it is needed and uh, conservation of nature and biodiversity and uh, like creating green job as something uh, a new thing to conserve our biodiversity like humanity depends on action If we fail to act it is it's like fail humanity when only humanity can uh, sustainable well being of all including nature also happens Adversity could be a source of new diseases, but once a disease emerges, great adversity is protective to us. So thank you all. Thank you for your patient listening. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have.
Is it visible? Uh, it is not visible yet. I will rejoin. Oh, yeah, sure. Is it now visible? Yes, now it is visible. And now I would like to introduce you one more time. Uh, today we are having a second talk by Ms. Surbhi Gupta from Department of Applied Geology, Anna University, Tamil Nadu. And her topic is Mass Extension through Geological History. So, uh, Surbhi, now you can proceed your presentation. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Today, I will be talking on mass extinction through geological history. Now, mass extinction is a very well debated topic for the past few decades, where we argue that anthropogenic activities have led to increased rate of extinction for several species. There is a famous quote in geology which says that past is the key to present and to the future. So, looking through the 4.6 billion year history of Earth, we will see whether this mass uh, extinction justification is well justified or what is the future that is in store for us. So what is mass extinction? Mass extinction can be described as an extinction of a significant proportion of world's biota in a geological insignificant period of time. Sepkowski in 1986 defined mass extinction as any substantial increase in the amount of extinction suffered by more than one geographically widespread higher taxon during a relatively short interval of geologic time, resulting in at least a temporary decline in the standing diversity of that species. Now, the extinction is so common that it can be considered an integral and perhaps an essential feature of life. According to Prothero, of the 5 to 50 billion species which have ever lived on this planet, only about 50 million are alive today. This means that 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever lived are now extinct. But in, so what is mass extinction in the temporal terms? So the fossil record, the, uh, in the fossil record there will be constraint, there will, there will be an absence of fossil record to the, in the lithology of the area. And in special terms, more than 50% of the Earth's surface needs to be environmentally affected. Now, what causes this mass extinction? There are overall three kinds of potential ultimate drivers for the mass extinction. The first is extraterrestrial causes, that is the meteorite impacts. Second is the terrestrial or volcanic causes. And third is the terrestrial non-volcanic causes, which are believed to be behind the climate and sea level change, the antagonistic biotic interactions and environmental feedbacks. This table shows the three categories of possible extinction events where category one refers to the local scale and category two and three refers to the global scale. 
The volcanic cataclysmic activities have the most profound and global effect, setting in turn a domino effect which in turn affects the other limbs of the biosphere. The biggest volcanic effect known is the climate change, when the carbon dioxide levels are drastically increased, combined with the ocean stagnation, which result in oxygen depletion, also the release of hydrogen sulfide in the final stages. The degassing of the host rock massive due to the thermal destabilization by the intruding lava and the contact audios and the geothermal influence of the mantle plume activity on the oceanic and terrestrial rain causes the mass extinction and the climate change. The volcanic activity due to the negative feedback mechanism also lead to climate climatic cooling episodes where combination of rapid weathering rate and increased biological production lead to highly efficient biologic pump. Volcanic winters were experienced where the ejected sulfuric acid aerosol and dust impacts combined with ash driven albedo effect caused the earth to enter the glaciation periods. In this table we see that first category where the kill mechanism, the process like the temperature drops which affects most biota, temperature rise which affects only the warm water dwellers and similar other processes. The global environmental changes affects some particular uh, latitudes and some particular fauna like the cooling of glaciation will only affect the mid latitude or tropical fauna which are not adapted to such, such climatic conditions and uh, on the other hand the UV radiation rise which, calls, which affects almost all the biota. The ultimate driver is a mantle plume or LIP mantle activity which in the further slides you will see how it has driven all the mass extinctions throughout the geological history. The terrestrial and the extraterrestrial causes also affects all the uh, the terrestrial agents actually uh, affects some limited area of the earth surface whereas the extraterrestrial cause agents uh, affects all the biota because uh, they have a very high impact and it uh, turns it sets in effect uh, multiple more reasons to cause a mass extinction. Now, mass extinction events are classified into two types. The first is the biodiversity crisis, which is determined primarily by significantly increased extinction rate. And the second is the ecologic or biotic crisis, when the ecosystem consequences of the biospheric perturbation were disproportionately large when compared to the stepwise biodiversity loss alone. It means that uh, in the ecological crisis, the biospheric disturbance is not very high, but the ecosystem has been if affected so much that the bio, the biologic uh, that the that it will it takes a lot of the time for the ecosystem to recover. Now, through 4.6 billion history of the Earth, there have been several major and minor crises throughout, but the scientists consider only five big mass extinctions in which the end of Permian and end Cretaceous mass extinctions were unequivocal mass extinction in the true sense. The end Ordovician global event was only a major biodiversity crisis, whereas the late Devonian and end Triassic extinctions were major ecological or biotic crises. This table shows how the number of families of the marine organism and the continental organism have changed across the geological history from the Ordovician to the Cretaceous period. And we can see the different drop in the number of families which are considered as the mass extinction, five big mass extinction events. And then the subsequent rise after the mass extinction when the number of families re-evolved or new organism, new species originated again and continued to rise. In addition to the big five, some scientists believe there have been additional major mass extinctions including as many as four extinctions during the Cambrian era. These additional extinction events include the Paleoprotalozoic, the Sturtian, the Marinoan or Gaseous and the current extinction. 
Central to the first mass extinction of the global ice age known as the Paleoproterozoic Great Oxidation Event and the first snowball earth. The surface of the entire planet is believed to have been nearly frozen squid beginning around 2.3 billion years ago. Killing of all prokaryotes and eukaryotes who were not adapted to freezing temperatures, low level of methane and the presence of increased oxygen. So we can see that the increase in the oxygen level also caused the first mass extinction in the earth because uh, the previous, the, before the oxidation event, the, the organisms were not adapted to, to a uh, atmosphere full of oxygen. The second snowball earth appears to have had multiple causes with consequence which may have been even more deadly, impacting a wider and more complex variety of life. Between 640 to 580 million years of annum, the planet underwent yet another global ice age. The Marinoan followed by a less extreme period of cooling referred to as the gas years, which came to close around 580 mega annum. These global ice ages were likely triggered by a combination of oxygen buildup and the spewing of a volcanic ash into the atmosphere. Following the close of the Maridoa or Cascade glaciation and the warming of the planet, an explosion of life ensued, including the evolution of the megascopic area currents. However, by 540 million year annum and the onset of Cambrian era, the area current age would come to a close and the area current would become extinct. All these extinctions are examples of biologically induced and genetically controlled evolutionary apoptosis and that these species were shed from the tree of life after having served as an evolutionary bridge to subsequent species, including those which flourished during the Cambrian explosion. There were four major extinctions during the Cambrian era, the most famous of which is the demise of the trilobites, whose extinctions were accompanied by archaeocyathids, which were rebuilding organisms. Some species of the trilobite recovered. However, as we all know that their days were numbered and they were finally wiped out along with several other species including uh, many of the brachiopod and the conodon species. For this mass, ex for this, uh, ex uh, mass extinction, the proposed causes are made by low and oxygen leading to anoxia and the changes in the chemistry. Now we will see the five major mass extinctions. We will be focusing mainly on what caused this mass extinction. The first major mass extinction is the end Ordovician major biodiversity crisis, which occurred about 444 mega annum ago. There were actually two late Ordovician intervals after the great Ordovician biodiversification event, which are Categorized by major biodiversity loss that was only due to an increased extinction rate but without any considerable ecosystem change. It is commonly accepted that at least two major parts of diversity loss separated by about one mega annum were linked with the global stress effects of the Gondwana glaciation. About 40% proportion of genetic extinction for the initial crisis was followed by 31% diversity loss during the second extinction pulse. Therefore, a total record of about 71% loss of species classified that this mass extinction was the second most severe biocrisis in the Phanerozoic. Among the major mass, major victims were the brachiopods, the strophomerids, the regenerated brachiopods, trilobites, nautiloids, cephalopods, phenoids, and conodons. But the graptolite habitats were also the graptolite habitat devastation was also well documented. The final diversity crisis state manifested by the worldwide world world worldwide collapse of the presumably cool adapted vacuum dominated Hedensia form. Now what caused this mass extinction? The key role is most likely to be the Gondwana supercontinent position at the South Pole. This paleogeographic situation promoted cooling of about 8 degrees Celsius and extensive growth of continental ice sheet of over 11 into 10 to the power 6 square kilometer. This finally led to the Sahara glaciation during the Venetian 
and the initial glacial expansion stimulated strong sea level drop and an essential reef building of the oceanic circulation which influenced the supply of nutrients from the deep sea reservoirs and negatively affected the diversity of the benthic and pelagic communities while transgressive amoxia marked the time of glacial melting as an additional factor toward the mass extinction was a large scale biogeographic shift toward due to the due to equator world and eventually pole world migration of the biota and the greatly increased competition in overcrowded habitats on the other hand there was also a very brief but extreme paleozoic ice house This cooling is repeatedly linked with the increased chemical weathering of the uplifting Caledonian mountain belt in the tropical belt, in particular of mafic and ultramafic complex exposed as a result of our continent collision. The feedback effectively disrupted the dynamic equilibrium between silicate weathering and volcanic degassing, and forced the fall of the atmospheric content of carbon dioxide below a critical threshold via the specific combination of astronomical modulation. Anomalous volcanic contents are reported from marine succession of South China and Laurentia, and uh, this uh, has been uh, used to identify the LIP emplacement. LIP means large igneous province emplacement. The second major mass extinction was during the middle, was during the late Devonian, which is characterized as a major ecological crisis. It was About three seventy one point nine mega annum ago, during the Middle Devonian, deep seas their maximum development in the Paleozoic, which is which can be seen as a mega reef tract in the tropical latitude, and by a very high biotic diversity of the reef of reef organism. So. Since the reef, the, the, the reef organism is there, it underwent a uh, extinction, and there is there is there was no recovery of this biota until the mid Permian. Even if the many reef dwelling groups were wiped out, most both in the benthos, the brachio like the brachio pore rubbles and tabular pores. Stomatopora sponges, trilobite, benthic pora mini, pera, and ostracoda, and the pelagic biota like conodon, as ostracores, tentalic pilids, and jawless fish. The total diversity loss was recently has been discovered to be only forty percent. This suggests that the removal of the ecologically key taxa, that is the reef organism, could have resulted in the long-lasting bio effect that led to the collapse of the. Global ecosystem during the late Devonian. Therefore, the late Devonian mass extinction is classified as a major ecological crisis. Complete elimination of the exclusively tropical benthic and nectonic groups, specifically the blooming of the ecreated conodonts, cynithozoans, and radiolarians, in affected deeper shell habitat. The significant drop in the stomatopora and coral skeletal density. Which was uh, possibly due to the loss of the photosymbionts and the uh, successful arrival of the deep water benthos, which was synchronous with the profound proliferation of the silicy sponges. So, in this uh, slide, we can see that uh, the reef uh, skeletal how they changed to the Devonian from an uh, aragonitic shell to the calcitic shell. Now, what caused this mass extinction in the late Devonian? Among the earth-born multi-casual scenarios, the primary cause of this global event is yet debated. But the widely spreading anoxia and the greenhouse climate changes, whereby two lethal cooling episodes, are usually the most accepted theories. Most importantly. The intermittent development of oxygen deficiency at a global scale is mostly highlighted. Only two brief cooling episodes of five degrees Celsius and seven degrees Celsius are well documented by the Kodak appetite thermometry. In addition, a depression of glaciation rate is explained by a widespread expansion of invasive species during the largest Devonian sea level rise. 
the earth in devonian crisis is recently thought to have been caused by similar area of earth bound killing factor but it but with a consequent switch into a ice house climate mode and aragonitic sea the devonian killer tree hypothesis which uh, which regards that the expansion of the arcticterrace deep rooted forest as the ultimate cause for the increased rate of pedogenesis and chemical weathering this led in turn to enhancement of continental runoff resulting in eutrophication of epicontinental sea and the coeval changes in the global climate toward cooling it is also however said that the first volcanic activity generating transient humid or warm condition controlled the fact control the stages of the afforestation the third major mass extinction is the end permian mass extinction which was about 251.9 mega annum ago this extinction is called it was so catastrophic that it is called the mother of mass, mother of all all extinction or the great die It was indeed a cataclysmic episode where life nearly died in the ocean because at least 80% of the marine species were wiped out. Many of the characteristic Paleozoic group totally disappeared, but this was in fact a combined record of two Permian extinction extinction pulses, combination of two extinction pulses, which were separated by a few million mega uh, annum mega annum. In this uh, mass extinction. Those that were typically greater than average uh, were affected. Fossil foraminifera, the rosebushes, the pitcher, and as well as the gastropod terrestrial bivalve species. In general terms, sessile bivalves with massive calcareous skeleton suffered the most. Tabulate corals, the pitcher, ammonite, trilobite, and crinoids were the major effects. Oh, the terrestrial ecosystem traditionally thought to be seriously disrupted. The only known species in insect evolution occurred during this end Permian extinction time. There was a global fall gap recorded in the uh, as the loss of peat swamp. There was also a reef gap and spread gap in marine succession. It was recorded, and the fungal spike. Was uh, also identified in the major extinction. The end Permian mass extinction was only one catastrophic cause because it it was so huge. The interaction of the diverse event and factors was highly responsible for this uh, catastrophe. Uh, in super greenhouse climate pulse with a temperature rise from about twenty to thirty eight degrees Celsius. the oxygen deficiency and oxygen ocean acidification are the the most severe killing factors but also it was paired with the amplified uv radiation which is evidenced by malcolm spores due to the volcanic effect as three world wide fires also etc on the other hand there was that like rapid eruption of the siberian lip Like the largest known volcanic domain in the geological history, it also correlated with this in Permian mass extinction interval and radio isotopic dating. The fourth major mass extinction is the Triassic major ecological crisis, which occurred about two hundred and one point three million years ago. Uh, during the late Triassic, extinction rate were as significant in this short boundary. Which is very short in nature, but is very well documented. Uh, uh, about uh, 40 to 47 percent species were were uh, genera were extinct, and about 67 percent of species were extinct. There were more than six. Uh, the major accepted groups were the foraminiferae, sponges, brachiopod, mollusks, and marine reptiles. But however, uh, in this extinction event, no major loss of reef is included. This diagram shows the effect of the uh, where the major boundaries are located, where it is identified and studied. And uh, the star symbol is the circular crater, where it is where it is 
see that capital asteroid hit the Earth's surface and led to the Martian event. In this diagram, we can see that the uh, Pacific Ocean side is not much affected. It may be because uh, it was very far from the impact site, but uh, may, uh, many tectonic effect was and uh, it uh, affected the organism living there also. Now, what was this highly celebrated mass? It is now commonly accepted that it has been caused by that uh, uh, giant extraterrestrial body. The KT boundary is well documented as a worldwide play or black sedimentary intercalation layer marked by exceptional geochemical and mineralogical anomalies, especially like enrichment of iridium and other platinum group elements, quartz grain, microspherules, and other impact objects. The record strongly favors the scenario that 10 kilometer size asteroid fragments struck Earth at that time. In the climatic record, the so called impact winter was an impact driven catastrophic event, atmospheric contamination by the post impact dust. But the, presently, the key role of atmospheric suit and water injection is emphasized. This dark and cold episode is traditionally thought as the main cause of the large scale photosynthesis shutdown and subsequent worldwide disruption of the terrestrial and marine food web, finalized in the variety of extinction in our ecosystem. On the other hand, high resolution radio isotopic dating and modeling of the radical trap record succession in, in, in India indicate that more than 10 to the power 6 cubic kilometer of exclusive volcanic erupted in several phases during 800,000 kilo annum interval was uh, which uh, was uh, prior to the mass extinction boundary and this massive uh, falling lava certainly influenced the global ecosystem and the biodiversity loss in a more long term stepwise manner. Obviously, the unique coincidence of the two events, the extraterrestrial impact and the extra LIP activity contributed to this catastrophic event. Many scientists also believe that we are now experiencing a sixth extinction which is driven by the homo sapiens, that is the humans. There is considerable evidence that the extinction has been accelerating over the last 500 years and with the advent of weapons of mass destruction and industrial poisons, pharmaceuticals and other waste which are dumped into the ocean and atmosphere, it could be said that the human race is flirting with self-destruction and may trigger a worldwide mass extinction which could wipe humanity from the face of the world. Now, what we include from this uh, natural global in our biodiverse extinctions with uh, mass extinction in true sense it, has, it is undebatable. The uh, end order which is only when the ocean is a biodiversity there is late ammonium and classic mass extinction by physiological or biodiverse extinction could have been caused by the impact of giant meteorite but most probably this was only a final step leading to the collapse of the biology, preceded by the latent volcanism. And in case of the volcanism drive direct stress to the meteorite or cometary impact on the scale, more likely the ice oceanic domain cannot be included in other particles. The four other mass several less important crises are more mesozoic or less paleozoic, certainly connected to with LIPs as a leading post trigger. Now, are we going towards the next mass extinction? Many prominent signs to the human activities are responsible. It has been argued that the species are programmed to die out and that some form of extinctions are due to genetically controlled evolutionary apoplasis. The species are pruned from the tree of life after serving some biological purpose, acting as a rich subsequent species. Certain species that are a normal part of life in different evolution exist of their own self-destruction. Are human genetically programmed to self-destruct? This is what we have to question ourselves. These are some principles which I used for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Surabi. Uh, thank you for such a fabulous presentation. 
and uh, today we have some interesting questions from our participants and one is from anuradha and she is asked uh, will hume go a extinct ah that is what the science of human extinction it is what i uh, discussed in the last slide of the presentation that it is very much debatable because uh, uh, all organisms are genetically programmed to go extinct one day or another so the uh, we, we are designed we don't know what uh, because we are very much codependent on the other organism of this planet everyone is interconnected interdependently so what we do other will ultimately come to us so that is a question which uh, must be debated okay and uh, second question is what is an extinction event from another itself okay uh, can you repeat what is the ext what extinction event extinction event is where um, about more than about 50% of the earth surface is affected by the dying out of the species or majority of the biological uh, majority of the biological species die out in a very short geological time because in geological time in as as a human 100 years is a lot of time for us but in geology even a million year is is a is a very small time so if if in a million year uh, about 40 to 70% of the species are dying out it can be considered as a mass extinction Any more okay, questions? and uh, next, yeah, we have two more questions, and uh, we will go through that first. Okay, and okay. Uh, another question is, how do the case of the current extinction differ from the past mass extinctions? Um, in the past, the extinction event was purely driven by the natural causes, like the extraterrestrial causes or the terrestrial causes, like the. volcanic activities or the geographical position of the planet uh, of the continents or the oceanic conditions but present condition in the present condition it has been accelerated by the human activities human act human activities are interfering with the natural causes and natural rate of the speciation and extinction like uh, even in speciation rate we are uh, genetically modifying the different species and uh, making new ch chimeras or different uh, new species in the lab which uh, which is not natural so obviously it is going to interfere in the natural uh, rate of the extinction okay and uh, next question is uh, what percentage of earth species die out during each of the five most severe mass extinction in the past fossil records uh, that was uh, actually uh, that percentage was indicated in my uh, presentation in the first mass extinction there was 71% loss of the species in the second mass extinction that is the late devonian there was only 40% biodiversity loss because it was an ecological crisis and not a biodiversity crisis the third mass extinction that is the end permian which was the greatest of all the mass extinction more than 80% of the marine species died out the fourth mass extinction was uh, where only 747% of genera suffered because it was an ecological crisis and the fifth and the last mass extinction about 67% of species got extinct Okay, and uh, next question is from uh, Maori. Uh, Maori, and she's asked, uh, "How to chemical weathering reason for mass extinction?" A uh, chemical weathering is a big reason for mass extinction because, as the chemical uh, weathering is rate is increased, uh, there is an increased uh, proportion of nutrients in the ocean basin, which cause a which causes a disbalance in the uh, bi biological productivity of the ocean and hence it leads uh, it sets up the chain where uh, where if there is like 
we know that if there is eutrophication in the present uh, lake in a lake what will happen we know if there is a eutrophication in the lake similarly if there is an ocean and there is an increased chemical weathering means we are increasing the number of nutrients in the ocean so obviously it will affect the salinity and the temperature pressure condition the density condition everything is going to be affected and because of that the uh, the organisms which are not affect uh, which are not adapted to that kind of conditions will obviously go to extinction if they are not able to adapt very quickly okay thank you sirapi and uh, next question uh, is by rahul and is he is asked uh, is there is any uh, time period after which we can say after that there is a chance of next extin extinction uh, any uh, time actually, relationship actually there is uh, some theories which say that there is a time relationship between uh, all the mass extinction events that it, that all extinction event of with uh, some time difference there are some theories but, uh, which uh, which are uh, like uh, uh, bound with the astronomical uh, setting uh, astronomical conditions but uh, these relationships whatever that are proposed it was uh, before the advent of the human beings on earth so what will happen after this because of the human the anthropogenic activities that we don't know Okay, thank you, Surabhi. And I think uh, there is no more questions. And uh, maybe I think you will share the PPTs in our group. Ah, yes, Surabhi. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Hello. Ah, uh, yeah. I think you are you are in the Telegram group also. Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, in geology, most time many people ask me uh, too many questions. Hmm? Uh, most of the people is related to geology, and that's why I said okay. And uh, whatever it is, uh, thank you so much uh, for such a wonderful presentation. And we have to our next talk. Uh, thank you, Surabhi. Thank you so much. Thank you, and for, for all the participation and for you to give me the platform. Thank you. Thank you, Surabhi. And our next talk will be on. Water and climate related disasters in India and uh, disaster mitigation. And our resource person is uh, Miss Sri Lakshmi A J uh, from the School of Environmental Science, M G University, Kerala. Now I will welcome Sri Lakshmi to deliver the talk. Sri Lakshmi, okay. Hello. So, this is the camera. Hello. Hello. Okay, come. Okay. Good evening to all. I am doing MSc in environmental and we have to teach about water related disasters in India and disaster mitigation. And uh, India, uh, due to its unique geoclimatic and socio-economic conditions, uh, is vulnerable to urban flooding, landslides, avalanches, and forest fire. Also, fire incidents, industrial accidents, and other man-made disasters involving chemical, biological, and radioactive underscore the need for strengthening the mitigation preparedness and response measures so uh, first of all uh, what is a disaster according to uh, world health organization see destruction of the functioning of the coast by 
of the affect community or society to cope using its own resources you know such disasters if the affected community is not able to cope to using its their own resources that even they stand as a disaster this is some criteria that a hundred or more people affected uh, or a state of emergency is declared and an international assistance is required if any one of these uh, criteria is applicable to an event it is considered as a natural disaster uh with disaster management uh, disaster management is the uh, organization and the management all available resources and uh, uh, available uh, community and to all human for uh, managing and uh, they facing in the time uh, and to it helps to im- uh, impact of disasters disaster and it is composed of uh, four four hello uh, hello sir uh, sorry uh, hello sir lakshmi now i think it's good voice is almost clear yeah okay can you okay disaster management uh, consists of uh, four um, phases mitigation preparedness response recovery uh, in this mitigation and preparedness are uh, pre disaster activities that is a disaster again includes measures and red back to the disaster and the preparedness phase includes uh, the development of plans of actions for when the disaster strikes it includes some easily understood terminologies proper maintenance and training of emergency services development and exercise of emergency warning uh, warning system and evacuation etc and the response this is phase of immediate aftermath of a disaster now uh, we are in the response phase of sars cov 19 pandemic this is the most complex uh, over this is the uh, most uh, this is the most complex phase over other four and uh, it includes search and rescue in there are some important terminologies related to disaster management such as hazard means any agent or phenomena that causes harm or damage to humans property or the environment example uh, nipa sars and that causes pathogenic organism or some for biological hazard and this no uh, risk and vulnerability Uh, vulnerability is an area is susceptible to the uh, damage due to the uh, effect of a hazard for example uh, the people of the south to sure of cyclone low resistance and lack of proper uh, management and the last one is exposure uh, exposure is the uh, degree to which the element at the risk are likely to experience hazard events or uh, a different magnitude uh, totally uh, disaster risk uh, is a function of hazard exposure and vulnerability the to disaster management details uh, about disaster mitigation 
also uh, we explained that it includes any efforts that taken to reduce a hazards risk and the methods helps to reduce the so disaster by use of our available resources etc and uh, there are two types of mitigation uh, measures such as structural mitigation and in mitigation mitigation activities through engineering activities that is there is a physical modification of our environment examples flood levees uh, building shelters flood shelters cyclone shelters that is uh, activities uh, by doing in uh, relocation can commercial any uh, examples are making policies low regulatory measures community awareness and education program the impacts of a disaster and another important point related to natural disaster is that uh, we cannot eliminate natural disaster but we can seek measures to mitigate the damages to life and the protection development that is uh, proper communication for planning building and consolidating that is uh, for example uh, the disasters associated with the hot weather drought uh, the water reservoirs help us to uh, cope uh, this problem and uh, another uh, flood during flood we rescue and arranging forces logistics in place under direct us to uh, reduce the negative impact of of a disaster and the uh, risk are uh, poverty population growth and urbanization uh, individuals live in areas the picture shows the site after and before the pressure from the population growth and urbanization they say uh, they want more places for uh, shelter so uh, it uh, allows them to living in unsafe area it also increases the disaster risk our uh, main topic is the water and climate related disasters made by the yeah founded by bay of bengal in the east and arabian sea in the west and indian in the south and the total geographical area is 3.3 million square kilometers and the main land comprises of four regions namely great mountain zone plains of the ganga and the indus the desert region Certain physiographic uh, data. So, let's take timely or uh, related to the evolution of disaster management in India. Uh, due to the uh, increasing frequency of natural disasters, the United Nations. as natural disasters uh, in the background our uh, government of uh, 1999 on the management under the chairmanship of the 
reforms in the strategic planning of disaster management and then there is a national after motion and for the government of india to take important step by enacting disaster hello sri lakshmi hello hello sri lakshmi hello 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 uh, actually there is uh, some network issue and your audio was not that much clear that's why I, okay um sometime uh, i don't know what happened with the net can you check the network once again need to sorry uh, left me <laughs> okay okay but now it is okay but i don't know what happened whenever you talk uh, there is sound the your sound is break huh? no it's okay kal ka ho hello yes now it's perfect yes now it's perfect oh. yeah okay thank you okay so um Uh, i'm saying about the evolution of disaster management uh, in india that is high powered committee report by jc panth and the national committee on disaster management in 2001 and uh, uh, after the uh, tsunami of 2004 uh, the, um, our, uh, our government of india took an important step by enacting disaster management act 2005 We decided to form National Disaster Management Committee. Uh, Head the Prime Minister, and uh, similarly, there is a State Disaster Management Committee headed by our ministers and uh, District Disaster Management Committee, the District Collector. And uh, this uh, table shows the count of disasters in India. the hypert committee uh, on disaster management identified five classes and uh, two types of disasters um, that time tsunami uh, is not uh, included in the table but it is included uh, in 2005 in this list uh, this there are five classes and 31 types of disasters we only discuss water and climate related disasters so uh, flood and drainage management uh, floods are characterized as long short uh, or no warning the main season for floods in india is south of monsoon in june to september and the floods of the country in the pre monsoon season also march to may and the post monsoon season october to summer also uh, while heavy rainfall Succeed uh, in the upper catchment of a river basin is the main cause of flooding in uh, rivers. Uh, the map shows the monsoon flood hit the states in 2009. And the uh, picture shows uh, the hydrologic cycle, I mean, or water cycle. It uh, underlines uh, the influence on floods. Uh, the main uh, factor that influence flood is hydrology cycle. It is a normal water recycle system on Earth, and due to solar radiation, water evaporates generally from the sea, lakes, etc., and the steam rises in the atmosphere. It is being cooled, condensed, and returned to the land and sea as precipitation. uh the important point is that over precipitation and a deficiency in precipitation also causes the disastrous event over precipitation leads to uh, flood and the deficiency in precipitation leads to uh, drought and this is these are the some photos related to kerala flood 2018 and uh, this is an incident occurred uh, during the kerala flood uh, when a group of national disaster response force personnel and police officers uh, were racing against the time to cross a bridge uh, for rescuing a child in uh, their hand over the uh, cherudoni river uh, in the idukki district uh, 
and just after it uh, the bridge was collapsed it illustrate the dedication of emergency responders in the uh, face of a calamity and uh, uh, hydrologic and hydrometeorological uh, data uh, from uh, all river catchment are being collected and analyzed and uh, flood forecasting and warning messages uh, are issued generally 24 to uh, 48 hours in advance so uh, we should use the early warning information from our government to avoid the disaster risk Uh, otherwise we are not able to cope these situations and uh, flood uh, uh, there is a, uh, another important need to ensure that all uh, village panchayats have uh, dug up the village ponds and encroachments on ponds uh, tanks or natural drainage channels are removed well before the onset of monsoon it's important very important otherwise it leads to local flooding um, by the uh, lack of drainage channels so it is uh, very important to uh, cope this situation uh, that is by using sustainable drainage management and another uh, important is that uh, in uh, in days drought uh, drought means any lack of water to satisfy the normal needs of agriculture livestock industry or human population may be termed as uh, drought the primary cause for the occurrence of drought is the deficiency uh, of precipitation that we all be already discussed in the hydrologic cycle there is a deficiency in the Uh, precipitation uh, in the 70s and 80s drought uh, droughts and famine were the biggest killers in india the situation uh, stands somewhat altered today where in it is probably a combination of factors like uh, increased irrigation development improved reservoir management food security measures that have greatly reduced death caused by so we are lucky to live in these um, condition so uh, we are not uh, facing such a situations because our developmental uh, measures and the prediction of drought is carried out mainly based on uh, rainfall predictions uh, re- using remote sensing data provides major input to all uh, types of rainfall uh, prediction the next is uh, cyclone um cyclone a uh, tropical cyclone forms only over the warm ocean uh, waters near the equator and uh, they may last with the destructive power for two weeks or more where a large open sea is available uh, in the bay of bengal and the arabian sea around india uh, their normal lifespan uh, may extend up to 4 to 5 uh, days let and uh, let's look on how tropical cyclone is formed uh, the warm moist air over the ocean rises upward from the near uh, the surface as uh, this air moves up and away from the ocean surface as warm air rises it causes an area of lower air pressure below there's a uh, in the bottom there's a uh, i uh, in the center of the uh, cyclone there is it is a lower pressure area as a result air from uh, surrounding areas with the higher pressure pushes into the lower pressure area then this new cool air become warm and moist and rises too, and the cycle continues that is the cool air, warm air in the uh, surface of ocean get rises and uh, and it will become a uh, lower uh, pressure area and as a result the air from the surrounding area with the higher pressure pushes into the lower pressure area that is i it um, create a cycle and a uh, heavy disaster uh, tropical cyclone uh, as the st- uh, storm system rotate faster and faster 
and eye forms in the uh, center it is very calm and clear in the eye uh, with a very low pressure air and uh, another important uh, disaster uh, yeah, that faced by india is uh, thunderstorm and lightning uh, a thunderstorm is a storm uh, that is witnessed along the loud lightning and thunder in the earth atmosphere and uh, thunderstorm occurs in different parts of india during different seasons uh, but widespread thunderstorm activity all over the country occur during the hot weather period also known as pre monsoon period from march to may and uh, some parts of the country experiences uh, thunderstorm during the monsoon season also from june to uh, september and the thunderstorm which are producing hail are known as hailstorm uh, hail uh, hail is formed when drops of water faces together in the cold upper region of the ice are called uh, hailstorm when there is a temperature variation it will precipitate the dust hail in kerala uh, we mentioned it as alipay we um, say like a fruit but if it is uh, the its size is large cause extreme damage to our building vehicles and crops also and also for uh, it is very dangerous for all so mark showing areas prone to hailstorm in india <laughs> next this uh, avalanches are uh, masses of snow ice and rock that mountain side to mountain and but they can be deadly because tendency uh, unpredictability it occurs when a, uh, so i will show a picture about the uh, avalanche it is when uh, occurs when a cohesive slab of snow laying upon a weaker layer so uh, per portion of a uh, weaker layer take some fractures cracks in the um, snow slab and it will uh, slides down in this steep slope and this is the uh, news report showing uh jammu and srinagar uh, national highway continue to be closed due to avalanches and the several places and uh, next is heat waves um we know that uh, the human body is uh, acclimatized to a uh, particular combination of temperature and humidity Uh, long exposure to extreme of cold or heat may lead to severe thermal strain and ultimately to death and there is a need for monitoring of daily minimum temperature in winter and daily maximum temperature in summer otherwise um, it will cause all um, major destructions similarly uh, we should uh, my monitoring uh, the minimum temperature associated with the cold wave uh, minimum temperature also in uh, dangerously uh, affect the human body and uh, another important uh, natural disaster faced by indian coastal uh, areas are uh, coastal erosion or sea erosion Uh, it is the loss or displacement of land uh, or the or the long term removal of sediments and rocks along coastline due to the action of waves uh, there are some natural hazards like cyclones thermal expansion of sea water storm surge tsunami etc are also influences the uh, sea erosion according to ministry of environment forest and climate change about 40% of the india's coastline is subjected to high medium or low coastal erosion and there are some uh, preventive measures 
to reduce the uh, coastal erosion such as improving vegetation along the coastline which is important for um, uh, improving slope stability and providing uh, shoreline uh, protection and um, by using grayons Uh, these are the low wall or barrier built out in the sea uh, from a beach to check erosion and uh, drifting the picture shows the uh, um, the use of vegetation and the grounds in to reduce the uh, sea erosion and the last one that is uh, tsunami uh, in december 2004 uh, we faced a drastic indian ocean tsunami uh, it's one of the major uh, major and dangerous disaster that we faced uh, in in this time uh, there are some photos uh, photos newspaper uh, reports related to uh, the disaster during uh, 2004 from uh, this marina beach in madras and uh, oh, okay marina beach in madras uh, let's look on how tsunami was uh, formed uh, tsunami uh, are formed as a result of uh, earthquake volcanic eruptions or landslide that occur under the sea Uh, when the events occurs under the uh, water huge amount of energy as uh, are released as a result of quick upward bottom movement for example if a volcanic eruption the ocean floor may very uh, quickly move upward several hundred feet uh, when this happens huge volume of ocean water are pushed upward and a wave is formed and a, a large earthquake can lift thousands of square kilometers of uh, sea floor which, uh, which will cause the formation of huge waves through this uh, tsunami waves are formed so uh, in these aspects uh, um, we discussed about the uh, important water and climate related disasters uh, in india and disaster mitigation um disaster mitigation uh, help us to um, reduce the uh, negative impacts of a disaster and uh, uh, another important should be remember that we cannot eliminate natural disasters uh, but we can seek measures to mitigate the damages uh, to its life protection the we should prepare uh, to facing any kind of disaster uh, by maintaining proper preparedness mitigation measures and we should work to reduce the risk of disasters uh, to reduce the risk of disasters so finally i uh, have concluded that uh, we should obey the uh, instructions from our government uh, and avoid rumors fake news and uh, very prepared for facing a natural disaster and avoid unwanted uh, anthropogenic activities which will facilitate uh, the uh, another disaster so uh, thank you all uh, for listening and there is a uh, quote that is uh, by failing to prepare you are preparing to fail that is uh, for a natural disaster we cannot um, Uh, we cannot eliminate it but we can seek measures to mitigate their damages so preparedness is very important so thank you all for listening me in the late time and also uh, thank you for jishnu sir and echo us foundation to give me a wonderful opportunity to share some knowledge and it will also help our fears uh, i know i have some uh, fear in uh, during this session and it's a very helpful initiative to avoid our fears and uh, without any fear we are a, we, it's a training for uh, presenting our knowledge and also gain some knowledge thank you all for listening me in this late time okay thank you thank you so much for such a nice presentation even uh, face some technical issues uh, you overcome all those things and thank you and we have one question uh, that's from anuradha and she asked any new technology to mitigate the natural danger is there is any new technology to mitigate the 
natural disaster but why new technologies uh on the election test so i can show to so so the new uh, technologies uh, related in the um, mitigation measures cyclone there are many cyclone shelters uh, uh, fl- uh, flood levees also uh, has medic also lakshmi and this uh, question is from deep and she um, you want to know about structural mitigation and uh, system mitigation other than the school university building or the authorized disaster managers responsible for checking out whether the safety line i think uh, she should know about the safety guideline that is provided by national disaster management authority what are those things uh, structural structural actual no. mitigation uh, during the year 2008 i think so yeah that was his help hello uh, Uh, any guideline that is provided yes there uh, are many things uh, uh, still shy uh, now your sound is breaking hello now your sound is breaking uh, please correct it hello 